So in theory, we have talked about what is inheritance, right? Basically, you can just use the features of a superclass. Let's try to implement that in this code. Of course, we'll not be working with humans anymore. Let me just remove the entire code from here and all gone. And let me also make sure that this is empty, gone. So we have a very simple method, which is main here. Now, what I want to do is I want to take the same example of calculator here. So let me create a class called calc. And of course, I can just create this thing uh, in some other files as well that actually makes sense. But just to keep it simple, I'm using the same file here. So we got a class called calculator. And in this, I can add some methods and some variables. So let's say I will define some methods here. And I will say public int, it can add two numbers. It will accept two integers as well. I will say n1, comma n2. So we got two variables, right? And then I can just return n1 plus n2, okay? Now let's say in this calculator, we have two methods. One is add and one is sub, which is sub here. And there's, there will be a subtraction operation. So we got two methods, right? Now, one thing to remember, if you look at our file explorer, every time you get a file, it also creates a class file. So for every class in your code, it will have a class files. We have used a calculator, a computer, human, student before. And that's why we have all these classes. What I will do is I will just delete them. Okay, so you can see all these classes are gone. In fact, let me also delete the demo one to see what happens. And that's fine. You can also delete, you can delete all the class files. So every time you compile the code, it will also create a class files for you. Let me, let me show you that. So I will say Java C. And if I mention the, the file name, which is demo.java, the moment I say enter, it will create two class files because we have two classes. If I go to Explorer, you can see we got demo.class and we also have calc.class. Now, when you run this code, if you say Java and if you say demo, uh, it will just run the class files. And as you can see, we are, we don't have any code here for calculator. So it will only run the demo class and that's how it works. So if I just try to write this code here, which already, which we already have, and if I try to create object of it, let's try creating object of it. In fact, let me do one more thing before we start. Let me, for this example, let me cut this part and create a new file. And let me say this is calc.java. And yes, we have this code here. So you can see now we have two files. And before I continue, I will just delete this class files again. Okay, class file deleted. And now let me just compile this code once again. So if you can see when I'm compiling it, it is only compiling the demo file. It is not compiling the class.java, right? But when I create an object of it, if I create object of calc obj equal to new calc, of course, if you want to use it, we have to create object first. And now if I recompile this and let's look at the class files, we got the class file for class as well. So if you are not using calc, it will not compile it. It will just say, hey, my responsibility is to compile the Java file. I'm doing it. But if you want to work with the class, the calc.class as well, or calc.java as well, you have to create object and that's how it, it compiles. Now, once the compression done, you can simply save the value in R1 or you can say obj.add. It will add two numbers, let's say four and five. And then we can also find R2, which will be result of subtraction. So I can say sub, I will say seven and three. Okay. So we basically, you can see we got these two methods. And when you try to print the values, I will print R1 and I will give a space and I also print R2. So basically I'm just printing two values back to back. And if I say compile again, because we have made some changes, and run, you can see we got nine and four. So four plus five is nine, seven minus three is four. And that's what we are getting here. Everything is working fine, right? Now there are two conditions here why we are going for inheritance. The first one is, what if you want to add some extra features? You want, so let's say if someone is asking you for, hey, you know, uh, Naveen, I want a calculator and I want two features, addition and subtraction. What will be the cost? I would say, okay, I will charge you $10. Now let's say if the same person come back and say, Hey, you know, I want a calculator which has four features, addition, subtraction, division, multiplication. And maybe at this, at this point, I want to charge $15. Now, of course, I can add those two methods here or I can create a new class. You know why? It's because if I edit the same file, if I add more features here, I can't sell calculator for $10 now. I have to make a new product for $15. I don't have calculator. I have advanced calculator, which does four operations. I want both the models. I want to sell the $10 calculator and a $15 calculator. That's one reason. 
Okay, so let me just do that. So let me create a new calculator and I will say this is advanced calculator which has all the features dot Java and in this I will basically have two more methods which is public int multi which will take two values and it should return n1 into n2 and likewise we'll have one more method here for division. So this is div and division we have to say slash. That's it. So we got advanced calculator which has two features. But now if I create an object of advanced calculator now instead of normal calculator, I can, I can access multiplication and division. I can't access add and sub. And that's why you can see we got an error here. It says the method add is undefined for type advanced calculator. That means in this we don't have add and subtract. So what do you think? What could be solution here? Think about this. So one solution which I can see is just write those two methods here. Of course, we can do that. Okay, we can just copy copy, and we can paste it here. But don't you think we are writing the same code again and again? Now, when you re repeat the same code, it is called redundancy, right? We have same code multiple times. And redundancy is a crime. So make sure that you don't repeat the values. You don't repeat the uh, methods, definition, and classes. The point is, if I don't define it here, how will I access them? That's where the inheritance concept comes into picture. So inheritance says, hey, don't worry. If you already have a class called calc, you can simply say extends calc. Your job is done. Okay. So you simply say advanced calculator, extends calculator. And now all the features of calculator comes in here. And there's one more beauty. Even if you don't have this Java file, that's fine. For inheritance, you need a class file, not a Java file. So even if you delete this, it will still work. Okay, so that's the first, first reason. Even if you don't have a code ready with you, if you do, even if you don't have a Java file, you can still use a class file. Okay, so that's the beauty of inheritance. We are simply saying extends calculator, which is this class. Now, what do you think? Will it work? Let's try. So you can see there's no problem. Add and subtraction working. We can add some more variables here. I can just copy this code and paste, paste. Oh, not on the same line. This is my R3, this is my R4, and I can just say this is multiplication. Okay, so multiplying number like, uh, let's say it's five and three, okay? And then dividing the number, let's say 15 by four. Let's do this. And now when I perform this operation, of course I, I want to print R3 and R4 as well. On the same line, I'm lazy to write multiple lines of code here and R4. So we are printing everything in, in the same line. Let's try what happens. Compile, no problem. Run, oh, it works. You can see that addition is nine, uh, subtraction is four, multiplication is 15, if I'm not wrong, yeah. And division is, is three. So 15 divided by four will give you a quotient of three. Okay, cool, this is working, right? So this is how we use inheritance. So important thing here is, this advanced calculator here is called a subclass. This calculator here is called a superclass. And to inherit, we use a keyword called extends. Okay. And this is basically a relationship of is a. Uh, advanced calculator is a calculator. And that's why we say is an important word there. Cool. Can I, can I have multiple classes inheriting each other? We can. That we'll see in the upcoming videos. At this point, we just went for a simple inheritance where we just use the feature of a superclass. You can say parent has all these two features. Child is just extending it or using it. I can say this is nepot nepotism. So <laughs> that's it from this video. I hope you enjoyed and see you in the next video.